Greetings from Home Office version 4. So today I wanted to talk about two things. The first is I was recently asked by an interviewer how long it took me to write my book and how I actually finished it. And the story is, uh, as I mentioned in our first vlog, that uh, it took me 10 years to write Log Off. That's a long time. Uh, maybe not quite 10 years, a little over nine years. Um, and the reason was writer's block. Uh, I knew uh, when, when I had this life-changing experience, my Montana moment, as I called, um, I, I knew I wanted to change my life. I started making changes, setting boundaries, strict boundaries with my phone, internet use, social media. Um, and as I mentioned in the book, my productivity and social life. But anyway, to write Acts 2 and Acts 3, it, uh, it took more of those experiences having you know, found what I believe, what I consider offline balance. It took, it took additional experiences, additions, le additional lessons learned as I continued to grow and uh, you know, go deeper in the offline nirvana hole of awesomeness. Yeah, I think that's a word. Anyway, um, so it, it, how I finally came about it, I would say I estimate Oh, my dog's licking my foot right now. Hi, doggy. It took me about, I don't know, uh, uh, less than a month to write maybe 40% 40, 40 of the book. Um, I, after that, I pitched it to a bunch of agents, had a lot of good feedback from uh, Walter Isaacson's agent, uh, John Grisham's agent. They liked it. They called me back. Uh, Seth Godin, a couple other business book agents called me back. Um, so that was exciting, but then ultimately nothing came of that. So I, I think I, I, I know I got a little discouraged and you know was questioning the book, the idea. Um, and so time went on, I'd say maybe a couple years. Uh, I didn't write anything in the book. And then I had another little good spurt, a little eureka moment of inspiration. I wrote, I think it was chapter five or chapter six, um, made some progress, maybe a chapter and a half. And then the same thing happened again. Um, life happened. I got busy with my, my day job and uh, it just went uh, for years and years and years. The turning point came last year. Um, I'd say maybe early in the spring. Um, I was speaking with a client of mine. I do some writing for them and I, I was talking with a man, kind of my hiring agent, so to speak, by the name of um, Adam Morgan. And uh, he was really, he took an interest in the book. I told him, look, I've only got like maybe 50% done. Um, and he told me, you know, look, it's all about momentum. It's all about just spend an hour. Don't write a book, just spend an hour writing what you can once a week. And I started to do that and that gave me the momentum I needed to kind of just keep moving, carry on, kind of power through that, you know, that those confidence issues or writer's block as we often call it. And uh, so that I went trickling along and then finally I caught the bug and I probably wrote about 45%, the remaining 45% of the book in uh, less than a month. I spent all of last September uh, writing it. I, I shut everything else off. Um, I finished the book, copy edited it. It was just a really great experience. And then that's when I started this publishing journey in October. And, and had the book published on December 15th. So anyway, that's how I wrote the book, uh, or at least finished the book after 10, nearly 10 years of writer's block and confidence issues and all that. And it's all about, it really is all about momentum and that great life lesson that uh, a journey of, what is it, a journey of 10,000 miles begins with one step or something like that, it's an old Chinese proverb. Um, this certainly applies to everything in life that is complex or big or scary, whether that's a small book that I wrote or um, you know, changing careers. Um, it's all about momentum and taking those small steps. And that's how I overcame you know, a, a, a significant amount of time um, uh, delay, so to speak, in writing this book that I'm very, very proud of. So today I wanted to talk about, as promised, uh, one of my favorite chapters in the book. Now there's a lot of, uh, it's hard to pick a favorite chapter because I put my heart and soul into all 13 of them. I think it is when you consider the epilogue and prologue as standalone chapters. Um, but uh, one chapter that really kind of really gelled and really, you know, uh, I think 
help the book move along was chapter two. And the title is Why the Internet is Hard to Put Down. Now, readers of the book will know that I kind of intersperse kind of my own personal story, my own personal addiction with um, uh, more instructive or prescriptive chapters. And this is one of those kind of explanatory or prescriptive chapters that talks and explains, you know, why are why are smartphones, uh, why uh, this desktop or internet computer that I'm internet computer because that's a word. Uh, why the social media? Why internet is so hard to put down? Um, and this pretty much explains it, and I'm really proud of the result. And basically, uh, there's there's a couple things going on here. The first is. I believe the king complex is what I call it is to blame for why the internet is so hard to put down and that includes social media and smartphones. The king complex is the idea that um, you know mere serfs like us or uh, mere mortals now have more access, more power, more on demand. We can call for anything. Uh, basically anything as often and as frequently as we like. Basically the internet is bottomless and we can call upon it for our interests to satisfy whims, wants, desires, to um, you know create the illusion that we have a lot of friends. We can we can pull up, you know, hey, let me see who my friends are and what they're eating and what they're doing today. And it gives us this power that we have all these subjects and we can do whatever we want. We have all these gestures working for us that we can Hey, let me see this, that, the other, get me more, more, more. And uh, that's really what the internet does um, in terms of, uh, it makes us feel like kings and power corrupts people and power has corrupted us and how we use the internet, social media, and our smartphones. I wanted to read a passage from that before I get to the second part of the chapter um, and it's this. In other words, the internet offers power or, the, or at least the illusion of it. That's the real reason the internet is so addicting. For the first time in human history, mere serfs can convincingly simulate the experience of kings and exercise dominion over digital domains, their own fantasized corner of reality on the internet with a sea of subjects. Um, so that was the first part. And when I had this idea, it, it kind of really rallied me, kind of my battle cry, if you will, to help push forward with the book. The second half of the chapter then goes into the science as to why the internet is hard to put down. And basically it boils down to what's called a dopamine loop. Now dopamine is this chemical reward system that we used to, that scientists used to think, you know, we attributed pleasure to. Well, in actuality, uh, based on the you know, research and the scientists that I spoke to, dopamine is actually um, what keeps us curious, what keeps us searching for information. And so when you couple that evolutionary or God-given uh, dopamine that we've given, which is a good thing in moderation, but when you pair it with this bottomless internet or social media or smartphones where we can get anything we want, we end up in these loops and we just cannot get out of them. And that's the science behind why the internet is so hard to put down. So there's the king complex first, and then second, the science, the dopamine loop, that keeps us ensnared and trapped in that. Um, I end this chapter too by saying, although more connected than ever before now, we're also more detached than ever before, all because of the king complex that many of us wrestle with every day. It's time we kill the king. And that's what the book goes on to do for the next several chapters, explaining how we can individually and collectively kill this king, keep him at bay, and yet still enjoy uh, the luxuries, the convenience, the power of these smartphones, of social media, of the internet, because they, all told, they are, I believe, a net gain to humanity, but they can cause so many problems, which is probably why you're watching this video or you've considered reading the book, Log Off, How to Stay Connected After Disconnecting. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your life.